My Bubble Frock has been a bestseller of late. Thank you to everyone who has purchased it. I've received a lot of requests on how to add sleeves, how to add faux shirring in the back, how to sew the skirt without lining, and also if you can forego the fusible interfacing in the bodice. So today, I'm going to show you how you can add all of that. By the way, I'm Lydia and I create sewing patterns and sewing content here online. Welcome! Now let's get into making this bubble frock. Before I begin, please note that the pattern has 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter built-in seam allowance. Start with the front and back bodice pieces and trace those out, transferring all the information. On the front, measure 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter from the shoulder strap line and 3 quarters of an inch or 1.9 centimeters from the bottom corner of the pattern piece. Draw a curved line to connect our two new markings. Usually when pattern drafting, I work without the seam allowance and then add it back in later, but since we are only making a few adjustments, I'm accounting for the seam allowance so we don't have to add it later or get confused. On the back piece, we're going to do the same thing at the shoulder strap marking, and then line up the front piece at the side seam to mark the base of the armhole. Again, draw a curved line to connect our two new markings. Note that if you want to cover the bra straps, you'll want to move it in an inch or so at the shoulder strap area, especially in the back. To create the back shirring pieces, we want to create a section in the back. Note that the center back has seam allowance in it because there is usually a zipper there. This works perfectly because we need seam allowance where we're going to separate it from the side of the back panel, but it will also be cut on fold so we won't have to add extra seam allowance. Measure 3 quarters of an inch or 1.9 centimeters from the shoulder notch towards the center back. This is including the seam allowance of course. And as I said before, usually the back piece would need seam allowance where we just cut it apart since it's now going to be cut on fold and there is seam allowance in the center back already for that previous zipper construction and it's a rectangle. We don't have to add anything. All the width that is needed is there. Now we want to double the width of the back for the faux shirring panel. So just trace it out and stick it together to create that double width. Then make a note to cut on fold at the center back and also make a note that your elastic will be the width of this piece minus the 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance. Now you can cut out your armholes and here are your new bodice pieces. If you want to include the scallops, simply mark where the front bodice ends with the armhole and that will be the piece that you cut out on fold of course. It won't work to add the scallops to the back faux shirring unless you want them gathered so it's just in the front that we'll add them. Now we're going to create our own sleeves. So measure your upper bicep roughly from bra strap to bra strap for the width of the cap and from bra strap on the shoulder to where you want the length. I did quite a short sleeve, but you can do whatever length you desire. Multiply the width of the cap by 1.5 for less fullness, 2 for more fullness, and 3 for super puffy. I just did 1.5 and it came to 16.5 inches, which I rounded up to 17 inches. Draw a horizontal line of that width and clearly mark that width on a large piece of paper, but also extend the line beyond on both sides by about 4 inches or so. Next we are going to draw in our armhole area. So line up the shoulder notch of the bodice at the marked point but keep the grain line of this piece perpendicular to the horizontal line and then line up the underarm edge 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter above the extended horizontal line. Draw in your armhole curve and then do the same for the other side. Thank you. 
At the center of that line, draw a perpendicular line. To know how much length to draw, let's look at our measurement. At about eight inches, it hits the underarm area. So this is how much height we want for the cap. So for me, I'm going to draw eight inches above the horizontal line and also add 3 eighths of an inch for the cap sleeve allowance. Below the horizontal line is the part that will wrap around your bicep underneath. I did 2 inches, but you can do whatever length you want. Add another 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters for the hem fold that will hold our elastic. It will be folded up half an inch or 1.3 centimeters twice. Draw your hem with a horizontal line and the cap of your sleeve with a nice wide rounded curve connecting to the underarm curves. And remember the seam allowance that the underarm is already taken care of and matches the bodice perfectly. Next we're going to add a notch for where the bodice armhole sleeve ends, do a single notch for the front and a double notch for the back. Then mark notches half an inch and one inch from the hem and you're going to cut two of the sleeve in your shell fabric. Now it's time to cut out all your pieces. So many have asked me if they can skip fusing the bodice and my answer is yes, but your fabric will likely stretch out over time with a zipper closure in the back because it's a fixed width. And so every time you zip up that zipper and move around, it's going to kind of stretch your fabric out a little bit. Since we are making a faux shirring panel in the back, it is designed to stretch and retract so fusible interfacing can more easily be skipped. So cut out all your pieces and let's get started with sewing it together. This is a reminder that the seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter unless otherwise indicated. Let's start with the scallop trim. Place right sides together and trace out the scallop with the guide. Stitch along the scallop shape. At the corners, I did one back stitch on each side just to reinforce it. Once this is done, apply fray check, which will help keep these corners neat. And once it is dried, use pinking shears to trim close to the curves and snip down to each point, being sure not to clip the stitches. All of this will help to turn your scallop out and have a nice rounded curve. Place the top and bottom bodice together and stitch together. Do this for both the shell and the lining. Press these seams open in sections to preserve the bust shape. Next, you're going to place the scallop trim along the top of the bodice neckline shell and place the lining side over it, right sides together. Pin and stitch together. Then, you're going to understitch on the lining side. And if you don't know what understitching means, it means to fold the seam allowance towards the lining or facing and stitch it down close to the seam. So that's what we're going to do. This keeps the lining from popping out when you wear it. Next, press the seam. And that is the front done. For the back, we will start with the faux shirring panel. Start by sewing and understitching the top of the panel. Thank you. 
Turn it out and press. Then mark horizontal lines that are half an inch or 13 millimeters apart along the back for the elastic channels. Stitch along each line. I like to alternate the direction of stitching when doing this so that the layers don't get skewed to one side. Next we are going to insert the elastic in every other channel starting from the top. I'm using something called a loop pressing bar by the brand Clover. People always ask me what it is. So you can find it along with my other most loved tools on my Amazon storefront linked in the description. After inserting all the elastics, secure the sides with a stitch just shy of our seam allowance width, which is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Next, sew and understitch across the top edge of the side back panels. It's going to be the shorter edge if you had followed my instructions exactly when pattern drafting. Next, wrap them right sides together around the center back shirring panel, making sure that the understitched sides are matching. They are the inside of the garment. Then sew it together. When you turn them out, you'll have a clean finished back bodice. To complete the bodice in entirety, we are going to place the front and back right sides together and use the burrito method to clean finish these side seams. So line up the front bodice with the top layer of the side back bodice, then roll the front and back bodice towards this seam, which will allow you to wrap the lining side of the bodice piece around to match the lining side of the front bodice. Pin all four layers securely and sew together. And it should look just like this, no seams visible. To complete the other side, do the exact same thing. Moving on to the sleeve. Take your sleeve and pre-fold and press the hem to the wrong side, a half inch or 1.3 centimeters twice. Then unfold and overlock or zigzag stitch the sides and cap of the sleeves. Next sew up the side seam with the hem unfolded and press that side seam open. Then refold the hem and leaving a small gap at the underarm seam, stitch close to the edge of the fold to create our elastic channel. Next, measure your bicep for your elastic. With lighter fabric, you may want your elastic an inch or two longer than your bicep measurement. And if your fabric is heavier, you may want to decrease the length of your elastic. 
I added a bit of length since this is Japanese crinkle cotton, super, super light fabric. And I used a 13 inch length elastic. Feed it into the channel and secure the ends by overlapping and stitching together. Then pull it inside the hem and then you can stitch up the gap that we left in the sleeve hem to finish. Locate the single and double notch on each sleeve. The single notch lines up with the front of the bodice and the double notch to the back of the bodice. Pin in place, matching the side seams and notches, and sew, then overlock together. Next, fold in the cap of the sleeve a little over 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter and pin all around. If you find it difficult to pin it flat, sewing a basting stitch along the very edge can help pull it in enough. Stitch close to the overlocked edge to create the sleeve cap elastic channel and stop your stitch with a back stitch about a half inch past the bodice neckline, front and back. Next, feed in your shoulder strap elastic. This length should be about the regular length of your shoulder from front to back. I use this 12 inch length of elastic for this. Try it on to ensure it's not too loose or too tight, then secure it with a stitch across the elastic. We now move on to the skirt. My original bubble frock has a skirt lining which is sewn right sides together to the bodice lining separately and then secured with tacks to the shell on the inside. This is gonna be a lot easier. So we're going to sew it differently. We're going to sew the bodice to the skirt in one go. I did need to line the skirt, but instead of a traditional lining, the lining is sewn to the shell and acts as one layer of fabric. So I have already overlocked the side seams and stitched the basting gather stitches along the top. So for these, I stitched a quarter inch or six millimeters from the edge and then five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters also from the edge. I'll also mention that the lining layer is already hemmed and it's a good inch shorter than the shell layer. Place the front and back skirt right sides together. Remember that the front skirt is a bit raised at the center front to accommodate for the curve of the underbust. Pin together and sew. Then press the seam open. Now we're going to apply the bodice to the skirt. Line up the center front and back and the side seams.
Then for the front, pull up the bobbin, gathering stitches to match it to the width of the front. For the back, stretch the faux shirring area and match it to the skirt. There is no need to gather the skirt for this part. Once you get to the side back, gather the remainder of the skirt to match. I've done one side of the entire bodice, now I'm going to do the other. Now with everything pinned in place, it's time to sew. Leave the long thread tails so that we can remove those stitches after sewing. When sewing the back shirt panel, make sure you stretch the seam to full capacity as you stitch. So now I've sewn the bodice and skirt together in one layer and we are going to remove the basting stitches before overlocking the seam. We are almost done, the dress is looking really good, all we have to do is hem. So you can either fold the hem at a quarter inch or six millimeters twice and stitch along the fold, or you can just use a rolled hem foot like I'm going to do. To use the rolled hem foot, start by rolling your hem an eighth or three millimeters twice in a small section and use your forefinger and thumb to slide under the needle. Lower the foot and the needle and stitch a few stitches. Then raise the foot and guide the rolled edge into the foot. Lower the foot and start sewing as you feed in about a quarter inch or six millimeters. Make sure you snip the seams at an angle to reduce bulk as you sew. To finish, sew as far as you can, then take the hem out of the foot and ensuring that it is rolled under, stitch and back stitch carefully to finish. Finish the dress off with a press and you are done! If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and giving me a like. Also feel free to share your make with me on Instagram with hashtag bubblefrockhack. You can also include the hashtag bubblefrock and tag me at Lydia Naomi Studio so that I can see and share it. Thanks for watching.